One thing I wanted to explain, a certain mechanical component that influences the entire system of mechanics being the loading phase of the drive leg. This is something that I'm very well versed in because I've struggled with it since birth. When we do anchor down with the front foot throughout the drive phase, anchoring down and the posture that we have there, understanding how to best get there and the means to do that in a such a way that is fluid and not forced. So I look at the drive leg as basically the first major mechanical component that occurs within the delivery. Aside from the obvious the setup and the initial move, I look at the drive leg loading phase as a huge piece to align yourself in such a way to have the body naturally be able to accept and express force. Now, something that I struggle with, something a lot of my clients struggle with, the loading phase of the drive leg, descending from peak leg lift, absorb, produce, store energy. Now, if we don't have that storing of energy where we can proceed in our drive phase, with this drive leg being still cocked back and, and loaded, ready to snap. So instead of that, the optimal way, what we see is a collapsing of that early phase of the load, and then we don't get to store any of that energy. So the body being super smart and adaptable to all the stimulus that's occurring on the mound or flat ground, whatever you're throwing, what it'll end up doing, it'll leak the pelvis early, right? So instead of that holding and snapping into rotation, right, as the arm flips up, it'll slowly leak. All of that leak will have to have the pelvis open up prematurely. And then what I've seen a lot of times, even with me, is the lead leg, brain will send the signal to the lead leg, saying we need to land in more knee flexion because we've kind of drifted too far forward because we haven't got this load right. So if we drift far too far forward, the lead leg will have to then land in more knee flexion. And not that landing in lead leg knee flexion is bad. We obviously want to land in flexion, but it'll land in so much knee flexion because of that early stage leak that then we can't get this posture quite right to then catapult our energy from the back and transfer to the front or transfer up the chain through the fingertips. I look at all these kind of byproduct breakdowns that are occurring like at the end as something that happened early stages. And I would say number one most common is the inability to segment the two rotations. So the inability to have the hips rotate early, trunk stay neutral, so when we land we're here, that's gonna be a cause for a lot of breakdowns, early launch, limited arm speed, all these things. But the drive leg loading, if we don't get that right, we're gonna see a lead leg block breakdown. We're probably gonna see a limited amount of arm speed from that as well. And you're basically, you're rushing your drive phase, which I think, again, is a coaching cue that's probably misunderstood with the pitchers obviously having to hold runners on and, and working quick. So a means that I wanted to simply just touch on and kind of bring attention to is understand that we wanna work quick, but we don't wanna work fast. We don't wanna work rushed in our delivery, all right? The quality of the pitch and the quality of the, the delivery, the quality of the mechanics is always gonna trump being a one-one to home plate so the guy doesn't steal second, right? That's always gonna trump, especially in development. So always look at how can we best load the drive leg? Well, for me, understanding the mound, understanding the slope, gravity is pulling you forward. Right? And this is why stability is such a big component of the delivery, because if you don't have that stability, then you're gonna just fall into gravity and allow your body to just rush, fall, and you know collapse. So with this required stability of being able to essentially have that move where you defy the gravity and look at like the posture of the head, the posture of the trunk, the front shoulder, so the glove side shoulder, as a means to load. If your posture's out here, you can't hold onto that that load, right? It's gonna pull you, right? Same thing with having a dominant lead leg try to create this unauthentic stride by jumping out, it's gonna pull you. So same thing with the upper extremity. So if your upper extremity is going too far, I see a lot of times where guys try to over manipulate forward momentum and getting going down fast. But if we look at how to line our trunk, our torso and our head to be able to not only just initially load and absorb and produce force, but also store. And I think Max Scherzer is a really good example of this, how when he decides Sends, his glove side will actually dip crossed almost by his rear hip and that's going to then allow his head to stay stacked for that slight duration of time. Now there's this fine line of doing that well to maintain this loading phase and the flip side of that is essentially getting stuck over the rubber. So if you get too far stuck over the rubber and you defy all of that forward acceleration, then you're probably gonna be susceptible to when you do come anchoring down, you have no forward acceleration, you have no forward force to put into that lead leg. So then you're having to try to generate a lot of probably torso rotation, trunk rotation, and, and hand speed. So obviously 
obviously every thrower is different from one another. And it's really important to figure out for yourself what you need to do from the upper extremities in order to accomplish that load. Perfect world. We lift, now descending from that leg lift, that's when we look into the drive leg mechanics and that loading phase of the drive leg, absorb this weight, absorb this weight that turns into energy and force, and then we produce that into the ground. And then as we produce and we ascend into our drive phase down the, down the slope, that's when we store, and that's when that period of time where our trunk can kind of stay stacked, stay neutral or a little slightly bit counter rotated over that rear hip. And then when it comes time, since we've loaded so well, we can then snap as our hand comes up. I do a lot of stuff on the velocity enhancing move. It's basically what it is, holding and then snapping as the hand comes up. So we snap into rotation as opposed to just leaking into rotation. Because if we leak and our collapsed drive leg will cause this subtle, slight early pelvis. And that's what I was referring to in the beginning of the video with all these kind of byproduct breakdowns. Again, I speak from personal experience because it's something I still struggle with. So a big emphasis for me going into this next season is getting my drive leg loading correct. I'll produce a video here in the coming weeks comparing my 96 mile an hour mechanics to I think 88, 90 mile an hour mechanics. And you'll see, although a lot of the movements are, are very similar, the one underlying component that is different is the time spent in my load phase in that storing phase. And the only way that I can spend more time in that phase is if I align my upper body and my glove side, even my throwing arm a little bit, if I can align that a little bit more stack until the point in which calls for rotating the hips. Because the other fine line is getting stuck, delaying that rotation of the lower body. So delaying hip rotation and then coming down to your anchor point and you haven't cleared your hips. And now you're trying to clear after anchoring down which is another byproduct breakdown to things that happen when we get stuck over the rubber and spend too much time. So I know I make it sound like there's a small window for you to gain mechanical efficiency, but every person is different. There's a lot of people that, that favor internal rotation, so they're not gonna have a whole lot of loading. I'm trying to come up with a system in which height and body weight, and this is a different system than like accelerators and drivers, how height and body weight can play into how long you essentially need to spend in that drive phase and how long that stride needs to be for you to get the most energy possible from your from your body and from gravity hopefully that piece made sense i'll throw in some mechanical screening videos i have one on my mind specifically on how it plays for guys that are struggling with optimally loading the drive leg add a cross as you lift so then as you descend the foot will shoot out and stay in lead leg extension so as you see boom this to me, as the hands are, are separated, is a superior picture of what loading the drive leg looks like. So you have neutral lead leg, you have the drive leg being loaded. I don't care about quad dominant or hip hinge, to be completely honest. You have the glove side stable, which is gonna influence the trunk to be neutral. Hands are out, everything looks good. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. Robbie Rowe here. If you are interested in learning more about pitch mechanics, I put together an ebook. I'll provide a link right here for you to click to check it out. Everything I know about pitch mechanics, I put it down on an electronic book. Hashtag 2023. <laughs>